This video is about the retina and vitreous, number four in our series about the aging eye. In the first video, we looked in some detail at how essentially all dimensions of our vision change with time. In videos two and three, we looked at structural changes in the front of the eye, like cataract. In this video, we will look at structural changes in the back of the eye, like macular degeneration. Before we get to the retina, we will start by looking at the vitreous, the jelly that fills the middle of the eye. Though people tend not to think much about it, it can cause a number of significant problems. Picture the body of vitreous jelly as thick and stringy, like egg white. It is composed of a matrix of long collagen fibers which give it its structure, and smaller molecules which attract and hold water. Over time, parts of the vitreous liquefy and random, random collagen fibers form clumps. Those clumps are what you typically see as floaters early in life. Floaters can also be from hemorrhage into the vitreous or pigment cells released from a retinal tear. Early in life, the vitreous jelly is attached to the entire retinal surface inside the eye. Over time, the vitreous both liquefies and pulls away from those attachments. In the macula, that vitreous pulling can cause either wrinkling of the retinal surface or creation of a macular hole. As the jelly pulls away from its retinal attachments, it gains more freedom of movement. So as the eyeball moves back and forth, the vitreous jelly pulls in the places it is attached to the peripheral retina. Most of the time, it pulls free without causing a problem. However, sometimes the vitreous is attached firmly enough so that when it pulls on the retina, it creates a retinal tear. Vitreous pulling is the most common cause of retinal tear leading to detachment. This is covered in more detail in the videos on retinal tear and detachment. Now, let us talk about the retina, the film in the camera. If we take a piece of retina and put it under a microscope, we would see the following cell layers. It's a little unexpected because light comes in through the top, passes through several layers of nerve cells, before it reaches the photoreceptors, the rods and cones. Beneath the rods and cones is a layer of pigment cells, which are important because they support the metabolism of the photoreceptors, and the pigment cells absorb stray light within the eye. Beneath that is a layer of blood vessels that supplies the outer retina with oxygen and nutrients it needs to function. The retina is a very metabolically active structure, so blood supply is important. This is the view looking directly into the retina. The most obvious landmark is the optic nerve and blood vessels coming out from it. The macula is the area of central vision. The fovea, slightly darker, is the area of most finely detailed vision. This is the retina of a young person. Notice how sharp the details are and the nice shiny reflection from the surface. This is the retina in middle age. Notice the details are not quite as sharp, and the nice reflection is gone. In middle to later decades, note another subtle change. There are fine white spots that represent waste products called drusen building up underneath the retina. They start small, so I have added arrows to help point them out. If you still don't see them, some magnification may help. To see what is happening, let us go back to our diagram of the retina, looking at the photoreceptors in particular. Of the various parts of rod and cone cells, it is the folded outer segments where light is received. Every day, over your entire lifetime, the photoreceptors are shedding the ends of their outer segments, and that material is captured and digested by the pigment cells. The young retina on the left turns into the older retina on the right. The brown spots represent bits of waste material that build up inside the pigment cells. Beneath the pigment layer, de debris accumulates in clumps, creating the drusen we saw in the photos. Early on, the clumps are small, only visible through a microscope. As the clumps grow in size, they become visible on a regular exam, so that, and they can vary in type and size. 
To be complete, we need to add that the layer between the blood vessels and the retina, Bruch's membrane, becomes thicker with time, and that may impede oxygen flow. And the number of capillaries in the vascular layer also decreases with time. All these changes put stress on the retinal pigment cells and the photoreceptors. Do we lose photoreceptors with normal aging? Study results differ. One says consistent loss of rods and cones. Another says cones are mostly preserved but rods are lost. Some loss probably happens from normal aging and more loss can be added by diseases like macular degeneration. I'm going to mention here that the number of nerve fibers, that is axons, in the optic nerve also declines with time and we will cover that a little later. Here we return to the retinal photos noting the small drusen. Everyone gets some deposit of waste products over time, but it does not necessarily advance to macular degeneration. Here the drusen are shown as larger and more numerous. As macular degeneration advances, the pigment cells eventually die, which results in the pale areas indicated by the arrows. On a cellular level, as the pigment cells die, so do the photoreceptors they support. This is the end stage of the dry kind of macular degeneration and vision is significantly reduced. The dry kind of AMD typically progresses very slowly over many years of time. However, a small percentage of people will develop leakage, which is the wet kind of macular degeneration. This shows the growth of a new blood vessel underneath the retina where it doesn't belong. Eventually it will leak and bleed, as in this photo, causing vision to be significantly reduced in a matter of weeks. Current research suggests that the process of oxidation and inflammation damage the pigment cells causing them to atrophy or die, leading to the dry kind of macular degeneration. The other process, as we mentioned earlier, reduce the amount of oxygen reaching the retina. Starving for oxygen, the retina secretes VEGF, a growth factor responsible for the wet kind of macular degeneration. Most of the current treatments for wet macular degeneration try and block the action of VEGF. Just a few years ago, certain genes were identified with the inflammation process. That allows for a targeted approach for research to try and prevent AMD. A quick review of AMD treatment. At first, the only tool we had was laser to cauterize leaking vessels in wet AMD. Then, researchers found the oxidative damage in dry AMD could be slowed with antioxidant vitamins. Medicines to block VEGF turned out to be a better way to treat wet AMD because they avoided the damage done by laser. Last, most of the current research is directed at regaining control of the pathways of inflammation. For a lot more information on AMD and its treatments, see these videos. Last, we come to the optic nerve, the telephone cable that connects the eyeball to the brain. More specifically, connects the retina to the brain. This shows the retina connection to the optic nerve. Briefly, when light hits a photoreceptor, that generates a nerve impulse which goes to a ganglion cell in the retina. From the ganglion cell, an axon extends along the retinal surface to the optic nerve and eventually to the brain. In round numbers, there are about 125 million rods and cones, but only about 1 million ganglion cells, therefore 1 million nerve fibers contained in the optic nerve. This diagram shows how the number of nerve fibers in the optic nerve changes over time in several mammal species. The scale is percent of average lifetime. Let us select the two human studies and average them. At 40% of average age, axon loss is approaching 15%. At 80% of average age, loss is about 27%. Looking back at different species, notice that they all show consistent loss and roughly similar amounts over their lifetime. 
This is connected to vision changes that are not explained by cataract development. We have now looked at the major structural changes that happen in the eye with age. The structural changes from the lens to the retina to the brain affect every dimension of our sense of vision. We could measure a decrease in acuity, a decrease in contrast sensitivity, a decrease in color sensitivity, a decrease in ability to adapt to darkness, a decrease in sensitivity across the visual field, and a decrease in ability to process information as seen in useful field of view. In the next video, we will look at how vision changes affect driving ability. Here are selected references if you want to read about these things in more detail.